Hello and welcome back to my channel, I'm Emily and today we are going to be talking about fast fashion. So this video is going to be a bit more serious than my usual ones but I'm really hoping to spread some more awareness and education about fast fashion as slow fashion is something that's really interested me, especially in the last year, um, certainly the latter of the year and I think we can all do our bit to reduce our fashion intake because as you'll see in this video, it's not good. If you see me looking down, I do have notes here because I want to be as educational as I can in this video. So hopefully you enjoy and if you have any questions, please let me know. So fast fashion, as the name suggests, is fashion that comes out very fast and it's very cheap and affordable. So it includes kind of high street brands like Topshop and Zara. And then also you've got your ones like Misguided and Pretty Little Thing. And then recently there's been... Um, a big interest in kind of Chinese wholesalers like Romwe and Shein and these are all really cheap clothes that you can pretty much get in an instant straight off the rail or get them delivered to your door in no time and all of these brands always have the latest trends straight off the runway straight from what celebs have been wearing you know they're never behind on trends and they've always got new and exciting stuff for you to look at so up until about the 60s you had the four main seasons of fashion obviously following the seasons we have normally um, but then the swing of the 60s came and production costs got lower and uh, production got faster and we ended up with about 52 micro seasons throughout the year. So obviously to keep up with all these micro seasons, companies release a new collection nearly every week and there's always thousands of new items in store and online. Fast fashion is incredibly harmful to our environment, to human rights and worker ethics and also to our whole shopping culture in general. We've become so used to having this instant fashion available to us that often some items don't even get worn more than about eight times before being thrown away. And it's estimated the UK individual buys 26.7 kilograms of clothing every year. So the fashion sector is estimated to be worth around $2.5 trillion, which is insane. Um, and obviously there's so much competition, so brands are always trying to offer you the best styles for the lowest prices. To keep these costs down, most fabric fibres are now synthetic, about 60% of them. So these synthetic fibres are produced from oil, meaning that a polyester t-shirt has a carbon footprint of 5.5 kilograms, whereas a cotton t-shirt has 2.1 kilograms. However, one cotton t-shirt uses 700 gallons of water to produce, and worldwide cotton production uses 93 billion cubic metres of water a year. So these enormous amounts of water needed are putting strain on the water supply in Central Asia, like China and India, where water supplies are already under a lot of pressure, but this is just adding to it massively. And as well as using a lot of water, the toxic dyes in your clothes when washed or when being produced leak toxic chemicals into the water supplies as well. So because there's always new trends coming, it's very easy to get bored of your clothes. And this has led to a $500 billion dollar estimated value lost each year from clothes not being worn enough or not being properly recycled. And leading on from that, between 2000 and 2015, it's estimated there's been a 36% decrease in the amount of times a clothing gets worn in its lifetime. So in the UK, obviously where I'm from, 140 million pounds of clothes goes to landfill each year. Some of this fabric isn't even from clothes that's been worn as about 15% of fabric is lost at productions due to poor, you know, fabric laying out and off cuts that don't get used. And what's most upsetting about this is it takes 80 years for clothes to break down in landfill. The fashion industry as a whole produces 10% of the world's carbon emissions, which is about 1.2 billion tonnes of CO2 every year. And if we continue with the shopping habits we have now, by 2020, the total carbon footprint for the fashion sector would be equivalent to about 3,978 megatons. If those figures don't concern you, we have a set carbon budget to use by 2050 to keep the planet within two degrees of warming. And with the current pace we're at, the fashion sector would use 26% of this budget. The environmental effects are so devastating, but what I think is even sadder is the social effects of the fashion industry. So one in six people worldwide work in the fashion industry and about 80% of these are women. However, many of these do not have the right to proper protection and only 2% of these earn a living wage. Companies go to developing countries, kind of prey on them, build up their empire there where they don't have to pay their workers a lot to keep the cost down. And it's just really, really sad. They've got a lot of workplace abuse, just not getting paid enough, really dangerous conditions. These conditions led to a really horrible incident on the 24th of April 2013 when the Rana Plaza collapsed. 
This building in Bangladesh housed five clothing factories which all collapsed. 1,132 at least were killed and a further 2,500 were injured. And these big incidents are commonplace. Just five months earlier to this collapse, a massive fire broke out in another factory nearby, killing 112 workers. And since the Rana Plaza collapsed in 2013, there's been a further 109 reported factory incidents, which is just horrible. I'm going to leave a link down below to this Instagram post. It's really worth a read just about uh, sustainability issues and race. Greenwashing is a very prominent issue, especially in the fashion sector. Greenwashing is when a company uh, presents false impressions of green clothing or products or eco-friendly. The claims you see with greenwashings are often quite fluffy with no real meaning or like scientific backing and it can trick the consumer just to think oh well that looks you know eco-friendly when really it's a bit of a lie. A more suited example of this kind of greenwashing idea is these ethical lines that companies bring out so you've got like uh, Zara Join Life, H&M, um, Conscious, the ASOS Sustainable Edit, all of these kind of throw around words like eco-friendly, greener when really when you look into it there isn't a lot of backing. I read through the most of the goals for these kind of lines and most of the goals are aiming towards about 2050 with no real clear goals just kind of recycling thrown about a few times and often the claims are environmental and say little about worker rights. However what often confuses me about these like ethical lines is why can't they make the whole brand these ethical lines? Why do they have to have a separate section in their brand for ethical methods. Surely they should branch it to the whole of the brand, but I mean, obviously they've got the right idea. They are recognizing that there is really big environmental impacts of the fashion industry, but really when you just take a little bit of a look, they aren't doing much, to be honest. This is a fantastic app I recently downloaded called Good On You. Um, it's a really good way to check the um, ethics of a brand. You can search for brands, find out their ethics based on their environmental factor, their labour ethics and their animal cruelty ethics. Um, they've got so many brands on there, they've got really interesting articles as well to read. You can search by category or as I said search by brand and you can also save your favourites and it's a really good way to check up on the brands you're shopping at and I've such a good idea. So currently the economy follows quite the linear model with take, make, dispose and then that's it, that's the end of the life cycle of an item or a product, which is obviously very limited and very unsustainable. However, there is becoming more interest in a more circular economy, which, as it suggests, promotes more recycling, using waste, utilising um, other methods. The circular economy model aims to reduce waste, um, prolong the use of natural resources, uh, reduce shortages and have more focus on reuse and recycling. On the legislative level, the EU has made some changes and put in some aims for the fashion sector. Fashion production is a very long and very complicated chain with lots of different segments happening all over the world, so traceability and transparency are really hard, but the EU is trying to aim to make this traceability of a product easier. And in 2017, the European Parliament asked the European Commission to strengthen this commitment to improving traceability. Furthermore, there's been other changes such as the European Clothing Action Plan and also the Eco Label, which clothes companies can apply for to prove that they are producing with a low environmental impact. In February last year, the UN Economic and Social Council announced that sustainable fashion is a key achievement to the 2030 agenda. In the fashion sector itself, you've got more brands becoming more sustainable. Um, I think most notably Stella McCartney, she paved the way for a lot of things, um, such as not using fur and leather, and she really advocated for fashionable, ethical methods of production. You've also got new fibres coming out to replace these really polluting synthetic fibres such as Tencel which uses environmentally responsible production methods and naturally sourced materials. So obviously all this information you're probably thinking what can I do about this? One place to start is the six R's. So first we've got rethink, rethink about your habits, rethink about how you're contributing to the fast fashion industry got refuse so simply say no say no to these horrible worker conditions and excess shopping patterns 
and reduce. Uh, simply just don't buy as many clothes. I think we really don't need as many as these big brands force us to believe. So reuse, uh, expand the lifestyle of your clothing and if it's something you don't really like anymore, you know, give it away, uh, give it to charity, sell it. Really try make sure that clothing has as much use as it can in its lifetime. Recycle, so obviously we can give clothes away but we can also upcycle them. I've got a few videos about that on my channel. It's really fun to take something old and transform it into something new. For example, this top was just pink and I bleached it because why not? And finally, replace. So if an item does come to the end of its lifetime, think about a more eco-friendly alternative to replace it. Shopping secondhand is one of my favourite things to do and it's a very easy way to reduce your carbon footprint. So obviously you've got charity shops, you've got Depop, thrift stores if you're in America, vintage stores, eBay, that's a new favourite of mine. These are all great ways to access clothes with less of an impact and also I think it's more fun, there's a bit more um, exploring to do. I can literally sit on Depop and eBay for hours scrolling through. Um, you might find something that you know you don't find anywhere else and it makes it a bit more rewarding I feel. Like I said before, if you have clothes you're not wearing, sell them. Depop so easy to sell on or you can donate them to a charity which would be really appreciated. Again, upcycling, fantastic way. There's so much inspiration you can find online for that. And then it's really, really important to support your local and independent businesses. You can find a lot of independent businesses on Instagram, selling clothes and jewellery and makeup. Or if you have any shops local to you, make sure you try to support those. And then obviously you've got Depop, Etsy with small businesses. It's really easy to support indie brands and it's so, so important. And obviously that money is going directly to the owner or the few workers and it's not going to these big corporate giants who really don't need any more money. Obviously there are some items you can't really buy secondhand, but there are some great sustainable and ethical brands. Lucy and Yak are an independent and ethical brand, which you probably know for their dungarees, which are really cute. Pangea produce really cool sweats from bio-based fibers and recycled bottles, and they also use natural botanical dyes for their fabric, which is really good for water supplies. Obviously you've got Tala, a sportswear brand who uses plastic bottles and factory offcuts to make really nice and really durable sportswear. And they're also really clued in on ensuring uh, fair working prices. And then we've also got We Are We Wear, Girlfriend Collective and The Level Collective, just to name a few more. It's obviously it's so easy to get caught up on these sales, these deals, um, really low prices, obviously websites online they have bright colours and loads of things to entice you in easy to navigate for the most part um except zara like who does zara's website they are just trying to wrap you up um and get you excited about their clothes obviously they want you to spend the money and obviously it's hard to always shop sustainably and 100 percent ethically um obviously you've got price a lot of sustainable brands do have higher prices obviously to make sure the workers are getting fair money um, also you've got size limitations when shopping secondhand, they might not always have your size or the exact style you had in mind. And also availability in your area, you might not have very good like charity shops for example where you live. But I think it's more about just taking a second to think, you know, why is that dress of fibre? How much has that worker been paid? How good is the quality of this going to be? How long is it going to last me? And just stopping and thinking for a bit can really go a long way. We can all do our bit to reduce our fashion intake or shop more sustainably and collectively we can make a really big change. So that is the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was educational, maybe you learned something. Maybe you will try shop a bit less on fast fashion websites. I know it's exciting, I used to be so bad for shopping on fast fashion websites. Spent so much money, massive hauls, most of it would get sent back, which is another thing, often when you return clothes, sometimes they don't even end up getting resold, they just get thrown away because they can't bother to package them again. Um, which I wasn't really aware of at the time, I wish I'd known. But honestly, if you knew me, um, I've literally done pretty much 180 where I can. Um, so if I can do it, anyone can do it. All these necklaces are from small indie brands. This is from eBay, I upcycled. Um, my joggers were from Depop. Like, it is really easy to shop secondhand and sustainably. So yeah, I hope you take something from this. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe. Um, Follow me on Instagram, that'll be down below. I do want to do more about fast fashion as it is something that um, really interests me. Well, slow fashion interests me, so maybe I might do some more styling videos and um, definitely more upcycling videos because I really enjoy those. So yeah, I hope you're all well, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.